the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Verse 3, Ephesians chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Verse 3, According as He has chosen us in Him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of sons by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace, through which He had made us accepted in the Beloved. 7. In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace. Verse 8. In which He had abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Now I'd like you to be careful. Just look at verse 9 and 10 and 11 very carefully. Having made known unto us the mystery of His will, according to His good pleasure which He had purposed in Himself, what is that mystery? Verse 10. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him that worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. In whom you in whom ye also trusted after ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. 14. Who is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession? Unto the praise of his glory. Hallelujah. Please look up. I'm going to be sharing briefly on the eternal plan of God, the eternal counsel of God, very briefly. And then I'd like us to pray. Hallelujah. It's important for us to know where we are going with all of our prayer and fasting and and um, vigils and spiritual equippings and preparations why do we do all of these things i mean everywhere around the body of christ you find believers preparing ourselves hallelujah we're praying fasting building in the word abstaining from all appearances of evil to what end are all of these preparations i need us to understand because when we do not understand the big picture the eternal plan of God we will not value the things that we are doing and the spiritual investments that we are making hallelujah it's paramount that we understand that we're not just fasting and praying because we want to get to heaven are you listening to me there are so many believers who do all kinds of religious activities and all we are thinking about is just heaven heaven now heaven is wonderful are you listening to me we're all going there but I need us to understand that beyond the experience of heaven, there is a prophetic destiny. Are you following now? This is the eternal plan of God. God had an intention in his heart. Hallelujah. Before Adam came, before the pre adamite dispensation, God had an intention in his heart. And that intention, although it seemed to have been corrupted by the, fall, the fallen race and all of this, is still an intention in God's heart. And according to the power of his counsel, it will still come to pass. 
hallelujah and so we must come to a point where we understand God's universal agenda otherwise all we'll be thinking about is to pray and um, uh, get married have children get old and waiting for two angels to pick us and take us to heaven there's more say after me there's more, there's more. the Bible tells us there's more hallelujah and Paul is attempting to communicate the counsel of God to the Ephesian church letting them know that there was an intention in the heart of man hallelujah and that intention must be satisfied you know we live in a generation where we do not realize that God also has a need hallelujah we are full of our needs and every time we go to God we go to God with our needs our prayers now there's nothing wrong with that Lord my this my that I pray you touch me touch my family but we must come to a point as you begin to rise and become mature and perfected you will also realize that God has a need are you following me now that while he is committed to meeting your need you must also be committed to meet his need that's what we call koinonia a sharing together a participation hallelujah and God will never rest until his need is met he has a need hallelujah and Paul begins to give us a prophetic picture of the counsel and the plan of God he said that it is God's intention that all things will come under Christ remember that song he's changing everything in obedience to Christ He's transforming everything In obedience to Christ He's renewing everything In obedience to Christ Hallelujah! So that all things will come under Christ And now I want to explain to you the structure Jesus Christ the one who we call the Christ to achieve the eternal purposes of God he came under submission to the government and the authority of his father I like you to listen very carefully the Bible makes us to understand that although he was equal with God Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 hallelujah that he considered it not a thing to be grasped but he humbled himself hallelujah Although he is also God, co-equal in power and authority, but he chose to come under the governing influence of his father. Are you following me now? And so, by reason of coming under the governing influence of the father, a name was given to him. And the Bible says at the mention of that name, every knee must bow of things in the heavens, of things on the earth, and of things under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Are you following me now? And then, when Jesus resurrected, he brought the church into a new dimension of glory. And the, the pattern is that the church will now come under the Lordship of Christ. Are you following me now? So Christ comes under the Lordship of God. And then the church comes under the Lordship of Christ. And as a reward for coming under the Lordship of Christ, He gives us His Spirit, the ability to make the world come under the Lordship of the church. Are you following me now? That's the eternal counsel of the Father. That Christ becomes the head of all things. And the only way He has to become the head is when He has a body. Hallelujah. The only way He is head is when there is a body. And so He brings those who have been alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and binds us together by his spirit and calls us the body that validates that Christ is head without the body Christ cannot be head are you following me now so that Christ sits in a position where he is head of all things and all of the spiritual preparations all of the fastings, the prayers, the revivals, the revelation, the spiritual encounters are all to this end that we be empowered and be equipped to so conquer the world and bring it to a point where they will acknowledge the authority.
authority and the government of the church and then because we are under the authority of Christ we will not take the glory for ourselves and will let men know that Christ is king hear me this is the need of the father and the spirit is on earth to promote this singular agenda bringing all things to the lordship of Christ hallelujah it's important we understand this in our honest pursuits for the anointing for prosperity for power for influence we all want to be great we all want to be successful we all want to be celebrated and praise the Lord he's teaching us these principles hallelujah we all pray in tongues but this is useless if we all pray in tongues for hours and days without understanding the eternal counsel of God hallelujah so every one of us is pressing that it's a big picture it's a prophetic agenda hallelujah and every one of us we have different roles to play in bringing that prophetic agenda to pass hallelujah then the bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 that to this end he gave gifts to the body he gave apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers and pastors to do what to equip the church to the point where they not only understand the universal counsel of God but they are equipped to bring that prophecy into a reality the fivefold ministry is not supposed to equip men to go to heaven we are supposed to equip men to satisfy the heart of God so that heaven will come to the earth I need to tell you this brothers and sisters that our going to heaven is real there's this rapture and we're going to heaven but did you know that we are coming back hallelujah revelations a new heaven and a new earth a holy city coming down then we will rule and we will reign with him so I like you to know that there is an agenda that is even bigger than this age the church age when we realize this agenda then our pursuit will become eternal I follow me when you realize this agenda money will not cripple you are accomplishing this agenda the anointing will not cripple you accomplishing this agenda all of them will be factors that will equip you to accomplish this agenda the reason why there's so much abuse of the anointing so much abuse of wealth and prosperity so much abuse in the body of Christ is because we only equip men on how to get the blessings but we do not let them know the purpose of the blessings in their lives so we have everybody running and tightening you find every bucket and drop it and then you are expecting a hundredfold harvest and then it comes now you are rich you are a millionaire and the Bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them because they do not understand that the purpose of this world is to satisfy the original intention the eternal plan of the father hallelujah then we cry for the anointing and pray in tongues for one year then a substance of glory comes upon us and we have the power to do great and mighty things and men begin to build empires for themselves forgetting that there is an intention in the heart of the father and that intention is that the church will bring all things to the obedience of Christ hallelujah and there is need for a reorientation because until we have this mindset we will not enjoy certain blessings and privileges that will come from heaven and it's always been my goal to educate God's people on the purpose of the blessings we have many believers who know their rights in Christ there are few believers who know their responsibilities in Christ I shall not die and then many people stop there you must finish that scripture but leave to declare the works of the Lord 
Amen. Until you finish that second line, you are not supposed to say amen. Hallelujah. Because it's a complete, it's a complete ministry. God is preserving you. Not so that you will live and just be a liability to the kingdom. Hallelujah. So if you are not leading to declare the works of the Lord, you have no right to stop demons from oppressing you. Let me tell you something. There is a dimension of your life. There is a realm that you get to where your ultimate desire is to satisfy the need of the Father. When you get to that point, God can allow a nation die so that you will live. You are too relevant for the accomplishment of that prophecy. There are some people that Satan cannot toy about. It's not just about their prayer life. They have come to a point where losing them is like losing a generation. They are called choice souls. Hallelujah. Your degree of contribution to the advancement of the kingdom is so 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 evident there are some people satan doesn't want to backslide he wants them to die there's no point backsliding they are so much a threat to the kingdom of darkness satan does not want them to backslide just wants them out of the way and i don't know how many of us belong to that category that you can look at the lord and say lord in all honesty I can say I'm living today promoting your kingdom. I'm not just talking about preaching and doing ministry on stage. I'm talking about actively contributing your quota to bring all things to the Lordship of Christ so that he becomes King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There's no controversy about his place in heaven. That's the reason why heaven is in a state of excellence. The controversy is here on earth. While he's saying I am king, there exists a system, Babylon, a system that does not come under the lordship of Christ. A system that contends and argues with the fact that Jesus is Lord. And that system is in our education, in banking, finance, family, politics, everywhere. There is a contention about the Lordship of Christ and his banking on the church to demonstrate to the world that he is Lord. If the church fails to conquer the world system, then truly Jesus is not Lord. The proof that he is Lord is that we conquer this system, not run away from the system. That's what many people want to do. When we run away from the system, in ancient times, the kingdom or the city that runs away from war is the losing side. The victors don't run. They stand and conquer. But we have many believers running away from the system. And as we are running, we say he is Lord. There's corruption. I say, me, I, I, I'm not. You, you've got to conquer the system. That's why I say you are the light, not of the church. You are the light of the world. You are the one who represents the government of heaven. You are the light. You are the light. Then he says, let your light so shine. Not before angels. Let your light so shine before men that they may see. And in their seeing, they will glorify your father. So we have a ministry. Say after me, I have a ministry. Our concept of ministry has been terribly lopsided. For many of us, these are the ministers, the great men and women of God. Unfortunately, I need you to understand that these are the gifts that prepare the ministers. You are the ministers. That's what the Bible says. That he gave gifts. The fivefold ministry are the gifts that prepare the church for the work of the ministry. When you live in a system and evil fails to prevail in that system, you are an ambassador. You have conquered that system and brought it to the obedience of Christ. So we are not just talking about having a ministry and having plenty of church members and congratulating yourself. No, there's more than that. We are talking about apostolic invasion. Taking cities where by reason of your being in a place, a territory 
becomes a no-go area for evil. We have too many believers who do not think society. We only think church. So our society is corrupted and polluted. In Nigeria, for instance, there's corruption everywhere. And even if you have not participated, I have, you, I have a question for you tonight. What have you done about it? Many believers like being passive. Just don't trouble me, leave me alone. You cheat and just go. But the Lord needs men and women who will not only understand his agenda for theoret for what do you call it theoretical and theological purposes so that when you stand on stage you can articulate the mysteries of scripture no you must be doing doing your doing is proof that he is lord hallelujah we need men and women who will truly stand as beacons of light this is the concept of the kingdom. This is the concept of government. We need men and women who when you become a multi-millionaire will not mourn another liability. Men and women who can stand for righteousness. Men and women who can stand for truth. Understanding that even if no one sees you to reward you here on earth, it is your contribution to the advancement of his kingdom. Many times when we do nice things, we always want people seeing and rewarding us there and then. But when we are obsessed with the universal agenda of God, you will pump in your millions, you will pump in your anointing, and nothing will take his place in your life. Nothing. came to a point in my life when I said Lord deliver me from ministry and the nonsense that goes on in ministry it's a wonderful thing when you are honored in ministry they bring water for you nice cup and ushers do everything they pick up your Bible for you and you are the man of God until you are obsessed with the agenda of the kingdom such kind of people will not last in the next revival of the spirit that is coming it's got to be men and women who understand that everywhere they are, God is. Hallelujah. And that we are ambassadors. We are ambassadors. Ambassadors representing the government of heaven. Contribution our quota to satisfy the need of our father's heart. To bring all things under the obedience of Christ the King. So every time God uses me to do great things and I say, Lord, be glorified. I take a step to satisfy the Father's need. Every time my brother does something excellent and the world looks at him and while they want to praise you and lie down and lick your legs, you direct them and say, Christ the King. We need men and women who are ushers not lords ushers who can tell them there is a greater one that's what john the baptist did he came to a point where he said truly he must increase but i will decrease we need men and women who will step out of the stage and say lord i will contribute my quota i want the world to see you and not me and let me tell you something god is not a selfish god so he designed his system in such a way that before the world gets to him, they will pass through you. That's the reason why they need a believer. Hallelujah. When you preach, when you minister, when the Holy Spirit dispenses his anointing through you, all of these things are acts of God's giving heart so that you will be a partaker of his glory, of his power, of his kingdom. But he expects something in return, that he be glorified that he be glorified now that I have access to you before you come to a point where we cannot reach you in Asso Rock let's change this revelation to our minds hallelujah that whatever you become in this life and whatever you 
have in this life is only a means to an end no matter how much millions you have in this life no matter the kind of anointing you have no matter the level of success in life and ministry is only a means to an end and the end is to meet the need that is in the father's heart that all things in this system come under the authority of Christ the King and I've made up my mind that for every second that I have breath in my nostrils I will press to that point where the world will see him as King one of the best music groups I love is Hill song I have never been disappointed at any of their songs you know many songs you hear nonsense then you hear one breath of fresh air they just exalt Jesus Christ properly I have never been disappointed because they are men and women who have committed themselves to exalt Jesus how many of you have listened to Hill songs how many of you listen very very well get more of their tapes get more of their CDs all their songs directly exalt Jesus you see the skill the excellence but then they let men see the king there needs to be an understanding in our minds because let me tell you something the sovereignty of God is about to break into the earth and many people will be trusted with things that their prayer life cannot give they will be trusted with things that their word life cannot give unusual realms by the sovereignty of God to enable us accomplish this agenda I am convinced that nobody's prayer and word life is sufficient to equip us enough for the kind of revival that is coming all that we are doing are seeds to demonstrate our willingness to be used by God the sovereignty of God is what covers for our inadequacies and brings us to a point and let me tell you something there is a ticket to receive these sovereign giftings of God. Availability is not the only thing. I know that it's, it's wonderful to say, okay, all God needs is availability. But availability is not enough. Availability and total surrender. Say after me, total surrender. Total surrender, total surrender is not giving your life to Christ. Total surrender is Jesus being Lord of your life. That's the concept in the baptism that you are immersed in a flood and they no longer see you they see only that water hallelujah the Lord wants to bless us the Lord wants to empower us the Lord wants to energize us let me tell you something you have not seen the anointing until we step into the mantles that the Lord will be bringing upon us. You have not seen levels of influence. We will command the, the respect of kings. But God is asking a question. Are you ready to satisfy my need? For many of us, our needs, oh God, give me this, give me that, and that's wonderful. But do you know that God has a need? Hallelujah. Every time he looks down to earth, he's searching for men and women who are busy here and there satisfying the need of the master. The need of the master is not miracles. The need of the master is beyond just saving sinners. Are you listening to me? All those things are wonderful and they are vital components of the kingdom. But the greatest need in the heart of the Father is that the church come to a point where we can truly allow Christ to be head. There are many people that have crime and they are forming heads in the church. The hand now wants to be the head. The leg now wants to be the head. But the Bible tells us there is only one Lord. There is only one faith. There is only one baptism. hallelujah and God is asking us a serious question tonight do you know my universal agenda do you know why I am anointing you do you know why I am saving you from death how many of you heard I was so touched sitting 
when I heard um, our brother sharing the testimony of his mom why do you think God kept you alive let me let me ask us an honest question why do you think God kept you alive I finished a vigil yesterday wrong I know people who came back from crusades on their way back they died I know many prayer warriors who are in the grave right now I know many word addicts one of them is Charles Finney's Dix a man who knew Genesis 1 to Revelations 22 of heart do you know the Bible that much at least the scriptures and he didn't just have the head knowledge he had the revelation every time I hear of the death of someone I ask myself Lord am I being relevant such that if we are to downsize people on earth will I still qualify and step forward hallelujah there are many of us that are full of our personal agendas I want to be this I want to be that there's nothing wrong except that if your pursuit will not meet the heart of the father I can tell you what the end is frustration that's why we have people who have tried everything tried money tried education tried marriage tried children tried power tried position influence and anything that life can offer but until we meet the need of the father to understand that we are ambassadors representing a kingdom and that we are supposed to conquer our territories and bring all things to the lordship of christ and let me tell you something frankly brothers and sisters christ can do it without the church he just chose to bring us so that we be partakers of this building process he said if you will not praise me there is in me the capacity to make stones to do what i've assigned you to do so never for once think god is crippled of power to compel the earth to come under his lordship those who have been privileged to have out of body experiences every time they saw the might of god they wondered why the earth is still suffering because it looks like at the snap of his finger he can bring everything in obedience to christ but he's letting us be partakers of his glory so he makes you a millionaire so he makes you a great vocalist so he makes you anointed so he makes you an entrepreneur and what do we end up doing just representing our own selves and our own kingdoms but the lord is calling us tonight that god has an agenda is what fasting about is what praying about is what abstaining from evil is what every preparation to come to a point where i satisfy the need jesus satisfied the need of the father's heart he said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and the man in matthew 25 the parable of the talents when they came back he told one well done good and faithful servant well done i am pleased i am touched that you have met the need of my heart can i tell you something if this is your desire on the journey to accomplish that desire you will collide with the anointing you will collide with prosperity you will collide with favor you will collide with increase you will collide with grace grace unlimited all the people i know today all who have been mightily used by god as many as have studied their lives they were never thinking of ministry they were never thinking of anointing they were never thinking of power they just had a passion for the kingdom many of them would cry and say lord use me and they will fast for reasons they cannot even explain and say lord i i want to make myself available and in doing that they collide with realms of intimacy and power that will cause them to shake our generations brothers and sisters 
tonight's teaching is a call the Lord is calling us not just to be possessors of things but to realize that he has a need in his hand so every time God blesses you as you rejoice in that blessing remember that that blessing is a tool to accomplish the need to satisfy the need in the heart of the Father his universal agenda and Paul poured out himself like a drink offering and at the end of his life he knew that he had contributed his quota to let the world see a dimension of the glory of God to bring all things I made up my mind that every environment I am in I will pour out my life in life and death to see that all things come under the logic of Christ and let me tell you this has nothing to do with ministry hallelujah we need men and women who will make up our minds and say I will hate what God hates I will love what he loves even if corruption is the order of the day I take a stand for the kingdom and I will let my environment you know listen let me tell you something you know the reason why God is talking to several people about being entrepreneurs because our standing for him is going to cost us something <laughs> I pray that the Lord will grant you revelation to understand what I'm saying that your your commitment to God and his agenda will cost you something for many people you will be sacked from the companies you are working because you will just not permit corruption and they can't tolerate you did you know how corrupt our our systems are and God takes you to an office and you are seated there and millions are passing your desk and you are supposed to sign and you know that this is corruption at that point you have to choose you will not choose it here in Koinonia you will choose it in the office there and let me tell you it's not a compulsory choice because you can align with the system or stand at all costs to contend and say in doing this I will not bring all things under the Lordship of Christ and no matter what it will cost me I am making a stand for the kingdom and let me be honest with you there are many of our parents that where they are today is not because they are not serious people is the price of their contribution to satisfy the eternal heart of God the counsel to bring to pass his prophetic agenda that's why the Bible says you should judge not when you see someone going through something before you open your mouth and start speaking shut your mouth and understand what the person is doing because I tell you the truth there are men who have offered their lives and their blood to see that the, the satisfaction that the master's heart is satisfied for such people titles cannot have an influence over their lives again for such people no amount of naira and copper will have a place in their hearts for such people no amount of influence will take his place and if ever i have a prayer i told god i said lord take my life one day to stop representing you take my life say through prayer one day for me to stop representing you if i'm going to stop representing you on thursday on wednesday let me quietly go yes the world will give all kinds of reasons some will say we knew it is too busy others will say i have i need whatever it is let me quietly go but that i cannot stand it one day in my life where i'm not representing his government directly has nothing to do with eni has nothing to do with koinonia has nothing to do with ministry it's a cry in our hearts is bringing everything in obedience to so this is a training ground god is preparing us for the things that are coming and i'm announcing to you great glory is coming however you must be prepared to use all of the blessings that god will bring to you as tools to satisfy the need of the father's heart 
to so represent him in every area of your life to represent his government and let the world see Jesus let the world see Jesus not Joshua Selma not the worship team not Koinonia if all of our glory and crown is that many people came for this meeting tonight our glory and crown that we have good sound equipment then let me tell you something that's a testimony of the prophet that said woe you know what woe is I love him more than anything he can give me in this life let me tell you something I told him I said Lord if you do not bless me with anything in this life it's too late I can't leave you again even if you tell me my name is not in the book of life no problem so long as I love you I will go all the way who is there like you there's no one beside you I leave the earth to praise your name To worship you Who is the like you? Who is the like you? There's no one beside you So my ministry is to lead the head To worship you so my ministry on earth today To lead the head To worship who is the like you? There's no one to be compared with him. But the world does not understand it. So we are here to lead the earth. We are here to set the pace. I lead the earth. I lead the nation in every system to see that he is king. To see that he is king. To see that he is king.
to worship you, to worship you, to worship you. God has a cry. To worship and you. And tonight, to worship He's letting you. us have His to cry in our spirits that He also has a need. To worship you, to worship you, to worship you. Oh Lord, to worship to worship you look at me oh, brothers and sisters can God trust you look at me this, this is a serious meeting tonight we are going to pray but there is a question is, see hear me God is not withholding the anointing can he trust you God is not withholding the wealth. Can he trust you? God is not withholding the influence. He's not withholding the favor. Can he trust you? There are many of us who shout, Lord, I will serve you. I will give you everything. I will let the world know. And just a little influence God brings to your life. And his government cannot be seen again. John the Baptist said, I must decrease that he will increase to let the nation see him hallelujah we're going to sing that song just a part of the song distant shores and the islands will see your eyes as it rises as it distant shores distant shores and the islands Come on, rise up on your feet and let's pray. And say, Lord, in my generation, in this time, in this dispensation, I will let my world see you. No compromise. No compromise. Wherever you send me to, wherever you send me to, in ministry, in business, in politics, in my home, you have a need, I will stake my life to see that the nations come to the Lordship of Christ. Parakete balarabasa. I say, Lord, we will bring joy to you. We will bring joy to you. We will bring joy to you. We stake our lives to bring joy to you. Make sure you are praying. Say, Lord, I obtain grace to be a true ambassador. I understand that you have a need. I understand that you are blessing me to promote your kingdom. Oh Lord, we ask for the nation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord told me something. I've shared it here. Friends, I submit to you. People ask me, What's the secret of this? What's the secret of that? What's the secret of power? What's the secret of grace? Now here and there, there are principles to follow. But the greatest secret I know is to win the heart of God with your commitment. 
it defies every law that I know. If you win the heart of God, he said, I have found my servant David, and with my holy oil, I have anointed him as a reward for finding a man after my own heart. How come there are six billion people on earth? But God is still searching for men and he rejoices when he finds one. I told God, find a vessel. Oh, find a vessel. Find a vessel. Find a vessel. Find a vessel in me. We are going to raise a cry. We we'll hold our hands all over us. We pray in the spirit. We are going to be saying, Lord, grace to satisfy the need in your heart. Grace. Come on, pray. Go ahead and play the instruments. Pray. Grace. 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 Sheka bariata balara. The church is praying. Grace. Let grace be released upon us to represent you. Grace to be ambassadors. Grace. Grace to stand for truth. Grace to stand for righteousness. Grace to stand for integrity. Grace to represent this government. Grace. Grace. We will not compromise. Grace. We are resolute. Grace. We are an army that can be trusted. Grace. Grace. We shout grace. We are the generation that will not fail the king. We are the generation that will not fail the king. We are the generation. There is a mandate upon us. There is a prophetic word. We will not fail. Grace to stand to the end. Grace in the midst of corruption. Grace in the midst of perversion. Grace in the midst of compromise. In life and in death. Grace Grace, grace. Go ahead and obtain grace. And say, Lord, I know if I'm set to meet your need, you will meet my need. Oh, the distant shores the islands of nations they will see our light they will see the light our generation will beam this light bright and strong we will raise a banner not a banner of denominationalism not a banner of our personal accomplishment a banner Christ the King Christ the Lord this is a generation that will seek the face of the God of Jacob. Beyond money, beyond power, beyond prosperity, beyond influence, beyond marriage, beyond favor, beyond education, beyond success, beyond accomplishment, the need, the eternal counsel of God. Muimaka, 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 Sujada, Muimaka, 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 we are the Sujada, Muimaka, 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 Sujada, Muimaka, 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 Sujada, Muimaka.
Will you give your heart away so he so you can, can use, use me? Will you give your fame away? Yes, you have made great accomplishments. Oh Will you give your fame away yes. so he you can use me? Shaparia Katabaladaba. Oh, arise tonight. Oh, I give myself away. Champions. Leaders. I give myself away. Revivalists. So you can use me, Lord. Custodians. Lord, I give myself away. Custodians of the coming movement. Yes. I give myself away. Greater than the Azusa Street Revival. So you can use me. Lord, I give, Lord, I give myself. I give myself away. So you can use so me. You can use me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. God has been examining our hearts. Because of his glory that is coming upon us. I don't know any greater way to prepare for the glory. I don't know any greater way to prepare for revival. We are not just a bunch of visionless people. Trying to be successful. We are men and women who are obsessed with the agenda of heaven. And that for every breath we take on the earth. It will be accounted for by our tenacity and sacrifice. Hallelujah. Father, tonight, together as a church, we cry. We are making declarations of faith that we will stand for you. We will not just watch evil happen and be passive about it. Lord, as you grant us the grace, we will break through barriers of nations. As you grant us the grace, we are making commitments to represent you, to let the world see the fullness of who you are, to bring the systems under the Lordship of Christ, that in our generation we will erode corruption from Nigeria. That in our generation we will stand as beacons of light. Lord, you can trust us. We will not fail. We are making commitments under heaven. That as you grant grace, we will not fail. As you grant grace, we will not fail. In our homes and our families, our children will only know that divorce was an ancient thing. Our children and families will only know everything we did not benefit from our generation will represent and we will let our children give you glory the love for Christ will be the norm in our society our generation will enforce it our generation will buy MTV buy channel O buy all the systems let me tell you we are coming if our hearts are right, there is no amount of wealth that will not be given. There's no amount of access, anointing, power that will not be given. We have taught here again and again that spiritual growth, please listen. One of the indices as we have taught to measure spiritual growth God has taught us here again that there are only two scriptural indices to measure whether or not a man or a people are growing spiritually. Number one is your degree of conformity experientially to the image of the Christ. Your degree of conformity to the image of the Christ. 
number two is your comprehension of the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom these two things must happen in your life for you to be said to be growing spiritually if for any reason at any point in your christian experience you are not conforming to the fullness of the image of the christ you are not growing and even if you are conforming to the fullness of the image of the christ but you do not have access to illumination the working knowledge of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom your christian experience will be barren and frustrated and it will still sabotage the fullness of all that christ died for so on one hand we must contend through intimacy encounters with his word to rise to a point where our lives become an undoubtable reflection of the reality of who christ is and then on the other hand we must have access to illumination light and understanding it says the entrance of thy word give it light then it gives understanding unto the simple and one of the mysteries that we have come to understand that control so many things so many results in the kingdom is a mystery that the bible identifies as thanksgiving now let me tell you something in your spiritual journey you should be able to tabulate the principles of the kingdom that through the ministry of the holy spirit you have had access to versus the results they were designed to produce that way your christian experience becomes predictable so when you talk about wealth and prosperity you should be able to define the principle that governs it health and longevity the principle that governs it deliverance and breakthrough the principle that governs it are we together now influence and increase the principle that governs it if you cannot match the outcomes you desire versus the kingdom principles that are responsible for delivering them your christian life will be barren because you will largely be guessing you see our ignorance in the body of christ is not ignorance of what we want we already know what we want but the mysteries to be engaged that deliver the results we desire we do we either do not know them or we do not understand their operation are we together now knowing them like i've always taught here is like having the ingredients for food if you have the ingredients for fried rice you have done well but that's not equal to fried rice you must understand the combination one mistake can make fried rice become something else one mistake are we together yeah. that's how it is so you must work with god to find out what ingredients are required for the outcome remember i gave an analogy one time i, I can't remember when um if i want to buy if i want to make yam and egg sauce i may be wrong but i think that rice is not needed in that combination is that true so if i am on my way to the market and you sell rice for me rice is good but it's not needed as far as what i want to produce is concerned now there are many useful informations in the kingdom but you have to find out which ones are responsible for the formation of what you desire so that that certain lights are available does not mean they are necessarily needed for this aspect of your spiritual journey when a believer gets born again there are certain realities that are true and consistent with god's character but they are not part of the ingredients required to lay the foundation for his spiritual work are we together now so if someone just gets born again i'm not going to be teaching him on the principles for of, for wealth and prosperity it's unnecessary it's a wrong foundation it's like using zinc for foundation zinc is important for a building but there is a season when zinc is needed when the house is already built then you will need zinc are we getting it now so it is important that as we approach the word of god we stay with the holy spirit to define for us 
the ingredients required for every season of our growth he is the only one who has in his hands the blueprint of the mysteries required per time per growth you cannot guess what you think you need it's the same arrogance that a patient would demonstrate seeing a doctor when you come before a doctor you don't come and say doctor i think i need panadol no 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 no. you may not even have headache so you listen are we together there are times you feel healthy but the doctor will tell you you need a drip it's up to you to trust the wisdom and the sacrifice of the doctor brothers and sisters this is one of the excellencies of working with the spirit he minimizes wastage in your life so you don't invest your life doing many spiritual things that are not profitable they may be spiritual but are they profitable as defined by the season you are in he says the men of Issachar had an understanding of the times and they knew what they ought to do let the Holy Spirit be the one to unveil the curriculum of your spiritual development it is costly to guess it is costly to copy you must work with him to define the blueprint part time so there are seasons in your life where he will switch his emphasis to your finances you may feel you are getting carnal he will never talk to you about spiritual growth again because according to his desire for you the formation of the spiritual house he's raising necessitates that you now know the principles of wealth so even if you are fasting he will still lead you back to the principles of finances and then there are times even if i'm teaching on finances in koinonia his personalized dealings with you is helping you conform towards the character of the christ so after you benefit from my teaching when you go back with him he would fold that script and keep it to be reviewed when that season is open in your life and you will continue your dealing on character with him this is how men grow spiritually but most christians don't respect the leadership of the spirit we think because a truth is spiritual it is applicable now no not every truth is needed at every time the holy spirit must prioritize truth like a spiritual house then you will find out if you follow him i guarantee you you will never miss out on any area there may be seasons where you think you have not known certain things yet just walk with him because by the time you get the basics, he will now say, this was a simple issue. That's why I did not emphasize it in your growth. If not, we will major on the minors and minor on the majors. Academically speaking, there are different courses and we add credit units to them according to their relevance with respect to the degree you want to obtain. There are courses that are one credit unit. You can study them in three days. There are courses that are six credit unit, three credit unit. That's how it is in the spirit. Not every truth has equal value. They are all true, but they do not have equal value. As far as the, the, the requirement for your destiny is concerned. Please, I'd like you before we continue to pray in one minute and say, Holy Spirit, I embrace your leadership. It, it's, it's not just important to be filled with the Holy Spirit. There are so many believers filled with the Holy Spirit. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. He didn't say, the Lord is my colleague. The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me. A sheep does not have a system of defense. It's only defense. It's his alignment to the voice of the shepherd. A sheep does not have horns. It cannot fight. His protection is absolutely dependent on the wisdom of the shepherd. So he says like a sheep, the Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of these mysteries, and I've shared it many times, I would share it again, is the mystery called Thanksgiving. There is... A revelation about thanksgiving that many believers do not understand in the body of Christ and so we have lost cheap battles we have given ourselves prey to situations and circumstances that truthfully speaking without any effort on our own would have established cheap victories 
may someone get this revelation today in the name of Jesus Christ Thanksgiving is one of the mysteries that we see being practiced in the Bible again and again that every time a people came to express their gratitude as individuals and as a corporate entity there was such a dramatic response that went beyond the object of their thanksgiving they thank God for certain things and God moved far beyond what they were thanking him for we see this even in the life of Jesus the apostle of our faith many times in scripture we saw him engage this mystery and it produced dramatic results so I want to share with us very quickly why should I give thanks why should I incorporate this mystery as part of the principles for establishing the victory of Christ Jesus in my life why Thanksgiving number one very quickly please the Bible tells us that it is a good thing to give thanks Psalms 92 from verse 1 to 3 tells us it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above so if Thanksgiving is a good thing then it means Thanksgiving is consistent with the character of God and worth practicing and worth living by the first reason why you must give thanks is that it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord it is godly to be thankful write it down it is godly to be thankful it is spiritual to be thankful it's a good thing it is godly it is spiritual to be thankful number two first Thessalonians 5 verse 18 the Bible tells us there that it is the will of God for us to give thanks first Thessalonians 5 verse 18 it says in everything give thanks for this is the will of God now listen the situation is not the will of God your response is what is the will of God it says in everything regardless of the outcome it should not affect your response give thanks for this the thanksgiving is the will of God so regardless of what is around me regardless of the outcome it should never affect my understanding and my approach of being ever thankful this is the will of God in Christ concerning you that in all things you give thanks the second reason why we must engage the mystery of Thanksgiving is that it is the will of God and we know that the only way the kingdom comes is when his will is being done Matthew 6 verse 10 right thy kingdom come only when and if your will is being done so there is a dimension of the kingdom that needs to find expression in my life and that dimension is at the mercy of me fulfilling the will of God as far as Thanksgiving is concerned meaning if I do not give thanks I rob God of the opportunity of demonstrating a dimension of the reality of his kingdom it is the will of God to give thanks number three Thanksgiving according to John chapter 6 from verse 6 to 13 help us media is the secret to multiplication Thanksgiving is the seed for more whenever you want more of anything in your life the key is not complaining the key is not grumbling the key is that you engage the mystery of thanksgiving multiplication and this he said to prove him for he himself knew what to do i love jesus he inspires me i love it every time the bible says he knew what to do it's terrible to not know what to do jesus knew what to do philip answered him 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little we're reading to 13 8 one of the disciples Andrew Simon Peter's brother said unto him there is a lad here that had five barley loaves and two small fishes but what are they what are they Lord I have this little talent what is it called 
with respect to what I need for my life. Lord, I want to build a house and all I have is 10,000 naira in my account. What is 10,000 with respect to 7 million or 10 million that I need? And Jesus engages a mystery. Verse 10. And Jesus said, make the men sit down. Now there was so much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000, 11. And Jesus took the loaves and when he had what? He distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down and likewise of the fish as much as they would, 12. When they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain that nothing may be lost, 13. Therefore, they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Thanksgiving. That's all Jesus did. He took the bread, he took the loaves, lifted it to heaven and said, Father, thank you. Because wherever there is thanksgiving, the grace that multiplies will always answer whenever there is genuine thanks those who know this have changed their lives overnight you see when you study the old testament many times people were punished for murmuring one of the things that brought the anger of god upon the nation of israel was murmuring and complaining is it only moses you will speak to this and that and that and that and they went through catastrophic events the bible says jesus lifted the baskets and he gave thanks the african culture has trained our minds to not be thankful are we together someone gives you one one thousand naira every day and then you now say sir are you not knowing that i'm growing now you started giving me one one thousand before i married are you aware that my wife is pregnant with twins we always want more by placing demands through complaint, by placing demands through ingratitude. But in the kingdom, the system of the kingdom is such that every time what you have is not enough, the way you let God know is to say thank you. Thank you is the code in the spirit that says, Lord, I need more. You don't say give me more. You say, Lord, I thank you for the one you gave me. And then he knows that you have authorized yourself to move to the next level of supply can someone say thank you jesus say it with all your heart thank you jesus don't say lord except you are not lord i must finish this year well i must and i must finish no it, it must be my turn to chop no lord thank you for me to be witnessing the 16th day of december i give you thanks and god will say that's right that is the code for finishing the year that's the code for qualifying for 2017 thanksgiving demons don't give thanks they never give thanks not one is not once in scripture there are some things demons cannot do they cannot give thanks it's not in the character of satan to give thanks it's anti-satan to be thankful you frustrate satan when you give thanks not only is it a sign of contentment is a mystery that acknowledges that there is a God above you and that that God is worthy of thanks and that he has more than you have experienced and that it is within his power to extend his benevolence to your life say it again thank you Jesus the key to multiplication Jeremiah 30 verse 9 Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 9 Jeremiah chapter 30 am I 19 I'm sorry not 9 Jeremiah 30 verse 19 I like us to read together it's projected if your eyes can get to the projector screen let's read together one to read and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry and as a result what will happen I will who will do the multiplication I will multiply them and they shall not be few I will also glorify them and they shall not be small 
just because there is a voice of thanksgiving to say lord i have just one child now but i give you thanks not to say lord will i die like that with only girls in my house some of those culture driven antichrist mentality lord i give you thanks there are many women who are barren but you have been faithful i celebrate you for what you have done and the bible says i will multiply them the code in the spirit is thanksgiving don't trivialize what i'm sharing with you when you get to a door you don't cry when you get to a door you don't weep when you get to a door you use a key a giant door can be at the mercy of a little key you can put in your pocket but if that key is not there that door will not open forever the key for more could it be that there are people seated here brothers and sisters who God is ready to give surprises in the next 15 days but the the next dimension of God's grace is at the mercy it says out of them shall proceed thanksgiving not complaining you see why many nations never rise our economic theories are designed to complain we shout and say everything blame who is not doing what blame this a mother is blaming father father blaming mother children blaming everybody and while they are doing that god is looking with all the love in his heart is limited by our lack of understanding the principles of the kingdom lord at my age i'm earning forty thousand. Um, is that a testimony your name is being mocked and god says my god someone else that forty thousand is his prayer point is what he put as a benchmark The secret to multiplication is thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Number, number what? Number four. The fourth reason why we give thanks. According to Luke 17, please, 13 to 19. Is that it is also the secret to wholeness and perfection thanksgiving is the secret to wholeness and perfection write this down it is the last step in exercising your faith in your faith equation the last step is thanksgiving haven't engaged the word haven't spoken haven't obeyed the last step hmm. a man of God said this and I quote he said when you are trying to call God the last digit of his phone number is Thanksgiving like you press 080 are we together when you get to the last digit the very last digit is Thanksgiving And they lifted up their voices and said, Master, have mercy on us. The ten lepers, 14. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Look at me. They were cleansed, but not whole. To be cleansed means the leprosy left, but their hands were still showing. You could see leprosy on them. Are we together now? If you saw them, you tested them in the hospital, it would show that there was no more leprosy. But their fingers were still stunted. Their physical expression still showed that they once suffered leprosy. And the Bible says, and one of them, see how scarce the spirit of thanksgiving is? Only one out of every ten. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a with a whisper quietly and say i don't want people to know the lesson uh -uh. the bible says with a loud voice glorified god next verse and fell down on his face at his feet doing what giving him thanks and he was an unqualified person 
a Samaritan. A Samaritan. Not a Jew. Next verse. And Jesus answering said, Were they not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Next verse. There are not found that return to give thanks. Save this stranger. 19. And he said unto him, Hallelujah. Arise. Go thy way. You have fulfilled the last step of the faith equation. And now your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. Are we together? Yeah. So you had the fibroid. They operated the fibroid and had to remove the womb. But you are alive. Yes, you are alive, but there's no more child again. Medically speaking. Is that true? The Bible says the woman returned and said, Lord, although they caught my womb and I'm alive, thank you. Take it to the next dimension. I give you praise. And then as she's giving praise and rejoicing, all of a sudden the God who made womb before makes another one and I'm standing here only because you made you made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you made a way and we're standing here only because you made listen there are many things in our lives that are not yet perfected and the key is although we have seen the miracle you came and you testified yes but many of us have stopped God from finishing you know how you build a house and God has a paint, has a wallpaper, has a finishing. And you say, Lord, I am so grateful. I mean, I'm so happy that I'm inside. And God says, do you know, if I show you the picture of this house, the, I'm, I'm still yet to paint and finish. How many of you know, those who do architecture and construction, that the things you use to finish the house can be more expensive than the whole building. So there is more compared to what you've seen. There is a bigger side to the miracle. You only saw a small piece of the pie. But we complain and grumble and compare ourselves. Were there not nine that returned? He says, go thy way. Your faith has perfected you. Your faith has perfected you. Philippians chapter 4, please, from verse 6 to 7. Still on the fourth reason. Philippians chapter 4, 6 and 7. Let's hurry up, please. 6 and 7. It says, be careful. The word be careful there doesn't mean be careless. It's the word anxiety. Be anxious for nothing, it says. But in everything, listen. Listen to how believers pray. By prayer... And supplication perfected with thanksgiving let your request there is a spiritual formula for getting your request known it says when you bring the supplication and the prayer you give thanks let your request be known unto God then it says the peace of God which surpasseth all understanding shall keep garrison your minds through Christ Jesus. So when you pray, having made supplications, you know, let me tell you something. Please look at me. The, the principles of the kingdom sometimes we look so childish that in our matured world, our world of excessive adulthood and intelligence, we are unable to just submit ourselves to the childlike principles of the word of God that's why Jesus said you have to become like one of these little ones if you really want to inherit the kingdom if you want to walk in the experience of the kingdom you must lay this excessive um, um, this sense of adulthood we are not children here the Bible gives a very simple formula 
that when you make your requests add it with thanksgiving hallelujah mm. the fifth reason why thanksgiving number five it is the secret to supernatural victories in the spirit the secret to supernatural victories brothers and sisters let me tell you i can tell you this from the authority of god's word this ministry and in my own life one of the cheapest ways to command victories over the powers and the forces of darkness is to properly and scripturally engage the mystery of thanksgiving very very powerful truth second chronicles 2 verse 22 to 24 second chronicles 2 22 to 24 and then we'll look at psalm 92 1 to 15 but we'll just look at 1 and 3 10 and 15 second chronicles 2 verse 22 to 24 sorry second chronicles 20 verse 22 to 24 media are you with us second chronicles 20 thank you 22 to 24 this was jehoshaphat listen the victory that was commanded listen and when they began to sing and to praise the lord said what ambushments against the children of ammon moab at mount seir which were come against judah and they were smitten look what happened 23 do you know while this was happening the children of israel were not seeing it they were at the other side of the mountain giving thanks and saying you are good and your mercy endures forever and then at the other side god was commanding great victories for the children of ammon and moab stood up against the inhabitants of mount seir utterly to slay and destroy them and when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped destroy imagine with me how the last two died everyone helped destroy another as if it was a charm you just fight your three of us plan to go and destroy pastor alpha we're tired of what god is doing in his life and we summon whatever arsenals we have and instead of him wasting his time on profitless things he engages thanksgiving and while he is doing that something is orchestrated makes me kill her and then i turn and we discuss who dies first she kills me and kills herself now i hope you know that these guys were warriors they were not children who were hungry they were trained soldiers you know how long it took for them to mobilize themselves and say let's come together as a threefold cord that cannot be easily broken and destroy judah the city of praise and while all of that were happening they listened to a prophet of god and he said look set the singers and the priest is that how you go to fight you put men of war and then women and then children that's how you fight war but it says this kind ah, reminds me of psalm 149 it says let the high praise of god be in your lips and a double-edged sword in your hands right to bind your kings with the fetters of iron and to execute vengeance upon their nobles he said to to um, paraphrase it now to execute upon them the written judgment how the enemy will be defeated is none of your business your part is to engage obediently it says having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your own obedience is complete hallelujah this was perfectly adumbrated Ejimi, in the story of esther and a wicked man called mordecai are we together now and uh, Haman, I'm sorry. Haman was plotting to annihilate the Jews. And he leveraged on his influence with the king. 
And while all of that conspiracy were going on, news got to, to Esther. And instead of her to go and murmur and say, am I your wife or not? She said, am I, you are my wife. She said, will they kill my people? Just That's how many women will complain. Vashti did it. She was out. It will happen to anybody because we are all women in the spirit. Vashti did it. She was shown the way out. But look, look her. You know why she excelled? She listened to Mordecai. The same way the church prospers if we listen to the Holy Spirit. Mordecai was playing the position. He started advising her right from scratch. Referred her to Haggai. That's how she got to the palace. She listened to Mordecai. At a point in time, she even wanted to be rebellious. But she came back to her senses. And then she went and met him and said, Oh king, I want to flaunt your glory. I, I want to let the people see how excellent you are. King said, go ahead. And when she gathered all the people, the king looked at her, paraphrased, and said, keep doing this thing every time. Do it again. You see, kings were stupid twice in scripture. One, when they took wine. The other one during their birthdays there was a kind of dance that kings received that they did not seek advice kings were wise people they used divination to make judgments so when a king vetoes all the astrologers a lady danced her way to remove the head of a prophet a prophet but a dance removed his head They were dead bodies falling to the earth and none escaped. Someone here is giving God thanks and you will go back and see a rearrangement. That's not how you left things. That's not how you left things. You left bills. You left sickness. You left all kinds of things. But while you were engaging the mystery, somebody is being forced to wake up from his sleep. And saying how long will you keep disobeying me you must bless my daughter here's her account number see it in a dream zero zero two five seven one you are dancing here I know some of you don't believe these things happen you see there's a way you disobey God so much that you don't even know that certain possibilities exist when Samuel prophesied to Saul he said on your way going it will coincide with two men all of them holding loaves they will salute you and give you as if they don't know what to do with it that's what happens when the light of God shines upon you men will bless you for reasons they cannot explain that's how Pharaoh blessed the nation of Israel it was like a charm that's why when they left he said what did I do something was at work released through thanksgiving when they conquered the nation of Israel and drowned them. Miriam raised up a song. I will sing unto the Lord, she said. For he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his rider have been thrown into the sea. And God said, you are ready for the next level. When they murmured, they were in trouble. Are we together now? Very quickly, let me give us three biblical ways to show gratitude. Three biblical ways to show gratitude. Number one, we'll look at a few scriptures. Psalm 22 verse 22, the A part, and then Psalm 96 verse 3. The first way to show gratitude is through testimonies 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 are a way to demonstrate thanksgiving and gratitude read with me please the a part one to go i will declare thy name unto my brethren i will declare it i won't be silent god has been good to me i won't be silent and say let them not say i have I'm, I'm bragging too much it's not a lie he was good to me he is good to me and i still want him to continue to be so i engage thanksgiving you know sometimes we allow people's cynical attitude make us guilty to sincerely express the goodness of god how many people are afraid to say what god has done in their lives 
because there are all kinds of people with wicked hearts the moment you say i was sitting down someone just brought the car keys of a house so where is the house show us the picture the, the, all these liars who just come and speak you know people are the the system of babylon has trained people to hate the joy of others they may be sincere people you just watch someone buy a suit that he couldn't have afforded before and say be careful oh. it's only god that knows what everybody's why must you be cynical testimonies are powerful provided they are communicated with a sincere heart when your motive is to come and waste time and make noise then that does not glorify god but when god has done good things in your life brothers and sisters let me tell you you perfect every happening and the dealing of god in your life through testimonies psalm 96 verse 3 quickly please psalm 96 verse 3 it says declare his glory among the hidden his wonders among all people declare it declare it declare it when you stand to testify it's not pride you're not bragging provided you don't tell lies and you don't behave childish you come before the people of god look look what god has done for me I didn't expect that I would be eating right now. But look at what God has done. Look at the faithfulness of God. And the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Meaning it has capacity to impart faith and reproduce itself. So when someone is listening to you and seeing, let your light so shine before men that they may see. And then through it, give your father glory. The moment you hear the testimony of someone, cancer, HIV whatever and then healed supernaturally by the power of God you now sit down and see how you have been insulting God simply because you have a breast lung and you say no 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 but it, it, I mean if someone was healed of A B C D all at once my God is faithful and you lift up their spirit testimonies are powerful brothers and sisters there are many people who receive so much from God but refuse when you were going through the challenges you told everybody including those who could not help you now that god brought a miracle he said no, no i am my nature is not to say anything I'm, I'm a quiet person by nature god does not just want you to keep quiet over what he has done how will they attest to the fact that he is faithful are we together now Number two, the second way to show thanksgiving is to sing praises. Write it. Don't wish praises. Don't recite praises. The Bible tells us how to praise God. He said, sing praises. Turn your testimonies into songs. Turn your testimonies into melodies. Still, Psalm 22 verse 22 the b part and then we we'll look at psalm 28 verse 7 please quickly psalm 22 verse 22 the b part it says in the midst of the congregation i will it is i will praise you in my room alone i will praise you i will sing in the midst of the congregation i will praise you psalm 28 verse 7 the lord is my strength and shield my heart trusted in him and i am helped he said therefore my heart greatly rejoiced and with what is the tool of praise with my not just the song of worship team there are times your gratitude will compose a song with my song will i praise you Psalm 105 verse 2. Let me give you a few scriptures to really help you there. Psalm 105 verse 2. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of his wondrous words. He says sing unto him. Bless his name. Sing unto him. 
Let him know you are so grateful you have converted your gratitude to a song. Two more scriptures. I found this and I think it was quite interesting. First Chronicles 16 verse 9. First Chronicles 16 verse 9. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Sing it one more time. Oh God, you are my God, and I. sing unto him sing psalms talk of his wondrous works did i we've read that already psalm 69 69 verse 30 psalm 69 verse 30 psalm 69 verse 30 i will praise the name of god with a song i will magnify him with thanksgiving so you sing praises unto him number three the third scriptural way you express thanks and gratitude is through your seed through your giving through your seed through your giving psalms 116 verse 17 through your seed your giving sacrificial quality heartfelt giving not something you yourself cannot give yourself i will offer unto thee there is something called a sacrifice of thanksgiving and i will call upon your name a sacrifice of thanksgiving amos chapter 4 i found this scripture and it blessed me so much verse 5 amos chapter 4 and verse 5 it says and offer what a sacrifice of thanksgiving with living and proclaim and publish the free offerings for this like at you all ye children of Israel it's not possible for us to get CEV I wish we could get any other version a particular version put it in an excellent way but it says offer this one you are not singing offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and then it says publish a free will it says i also oh, no 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 verse you're making a mistake verse five media Well, it's the same thing, right? Just, just, it's okay. Just, just leave it. That's all right. Offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Do you know, let me tell you something. According to scripture, now, even in the New Testament, men prayed and they sacrificed. Two things that went hand in hand. Prayer and giving. Remember Cornelius, Acts chapter 10. God told two reasons why he attracted the presence of God. Number one, your giving. Number two, your prayers. The, the, the scripture we read before this says how that I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving, then I will call upon your name. Giving and prayer go hand in hand. But simply because we have listened to people who have insulted every man of God, written rubbish, junk journalism, publish every kind of nonsense to think that men of God are out to just manipulate people and here and there I know that you will find excesses here and there but it still does not negate the fact that it's a principle there is a dimension of your speaking that only your seed can speak that you celebrate God and you thank him for his faithfulness and bring out a seed 
if it's not sacrificial it's not a seed of thanksgiving the bible calls it a sacrifice of thanksgiving i want to challenge everyone here as god grants you grace before you finish this year if not today find a sacrifice of thanksgiving in fact frankly speaking that is the standard way it should be done you shouldn't just talk about it and say wow this is nice i love you too much to not tell you the truth do you know while i was studying this already i gave my own sacrifice before i came and the interesting thing about me and god is i don't choose what i like you may not have faith for that now but may god grant you grace to grow to a level where you allow god decide everything including your giving he decided your wife he decided your job why not your money <laughs> you see the part you have not given god is where you will not get the best of him hallelujah something dangerous happened to me this evening because while i was talking with the lord and i said oh I just felt it in my heart i said no 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 the people of god it's important to challenge them on that wise and i just remembered every true shepherd must lead the way and i said okay lord so what would you have me give very interesting eh, Jimmy? god did not tell me what to give he told me what should be left in my account this is like this is like maybe 30 minutes before i came here and off it went oh no come on it all belongs to you oh, oh, oh it all belongs to you it all belongs to you oh, oh, oh. so i gave it with all joy thanksgiving two minutes accident will scatter your life they will use that money to bury you and fight over the change <laughs> are we together you leave it for a foolish person who has no discernment and wisdom that was the frustration of solomon he said i've worked so hard to build this now i would die and give it to an irresponsible son who didn't go through what i went through he said this is vanity i'm cheated i'm still rich but i feel cheated because i mean how can i just give somebody who has no sense let me digress a bit and challenge you make him lord of everything make him lord of everything it is foolish to surrender part and leave part god does not need your money he doesn't need your fame anything given to god is well taken care of god is a good manager our fears and insecurities which are a sign through faith abel offered a more excellent sacrifice it takes faith to give that you trust god so through your seed let me give us one more the fourth way that we give thanks is by continually seeking him and promoting his interest first chronicles 16 verse 11 by continually seeking him by seeking him is not like he's is missing seeking him is simply a, a figurative expression to communicate your desire for the depth of more of him i'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do i need you more and more lord i'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do i need you more and more 16 verse what did i give you 11 not 12 seek the lord and his strength is says seek his face continually not when the money now comes you know it's amazing how people seek god when they are trusting him for certain things we've dealt with this it has become an anthem 
that when your pursuit for God is tied to certain results, when you get the result, I'm seeking God because I want to twist his hand and force him to give me this lady to marry. The day you marry her, you set a goal and you achieved it. That goal has been achieved. There is no impetus to seek God again. I'm seeking God because I want to be a millionaire. Right? The moment you have a million naira or a million dollars or whatever, that's the end of it. You shouldn't seek him again. Why seek God when you have all the cars and houses? Why seek God when you have eight, nine, ten zeros in your account? Foolish people seek God for things. Foolish people, not bad people, foolish people seek God for things. Never seek God just for things. Lord, I am seeking you because if you are God, you must give me this pure water. No, 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 no. Don't try to twist his hand. Your heavenly father knows that you have need of these things. He says for the Gentiles run after these things. And your father knows that you have need of these things. But you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. You see, if you seek the kingdom of God, the word righteousness there, yeah, it's not just talking about righteous standing. It means God, God's modus operandi, his principles. You seek his kingdom, his influence, and you also seek to understand his principle. In doing it, you will find the keys that will cause other things to be added. Hallelujah. Don't seek God for things. Seek him and seek to promote his interest. That's why we are called ambassadors. A true ambassador is committed to promoting the interest of the nation he represents. An ambassador does not have an agenda of his own. If at any point an ambassador is found having an agenda of his own, he's a rebel. He's a rebel. The Bible calls us ambassadors. God has an intention. There is something he's doing. And we must plunge our entire lives to see his purposes fulfilled. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. It is not only important that we bless God and thank him. It is important that we praise him with understanding. It is important that we thank him with understanding. When you thank God in ignorance, the power is released through knowledge, not the motions. Knowledge. The revelation that backs what you are doing. So you can be dancing around and not know why you are dancing and sweat by his mercies and out of his love he will bless you. But in his system, everything that is not done with understanding is the same as not doing it. So if I give without understanding, it's the same as not giving. If I sing without understanding, it's the same as not singing. Don't just do things. Have the understanding that makes them powerful. Just like many people say, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. It's not just speaking with understanding. Hallelujah. God has been so faithful in my life in this ministry in our lives we will not only be disobedient we will be wicked if we are not lavish in expressing our gratitude to him not just by dancing but that you take your entire heart and put it on a tray and lift it up to him and say lord you deserve everything i was just thinking of the faithfulness and the mercies of god we have traveled this year like none other. The deliverances of the Lord, you hear the testimony that the lady came to share, their truck. Do you, know, do you know how easy it is to die when God is not protecting you? You can have a boil on your neck and die. Because the devil takes advantage of anything that gives him entrance. People just had headache. My head, my head. The wife goes to soak towel and comes out and meets a dead man thanksgiving we trivialize a lot of things people crying recession things are not going well there are people i think it was eddie one time we we're going to kaduna and he told me that um, some neighbors or so were begging for rice i'm not saying begging you for money 
come with a cup and say give me two or three or four cups my wife and my children are about dying but then the message of God some of us quarter to it finishing something happens again that was not even tied to your tithing because some of us have not been faithful at all yet his message you know when you know the message of God you will really love him you will really really love him brothers and sisters in the next two or three minutes we are going to rise up and I want us to so lavishly worship him and thank him just two or three minutes and then I'll just speak over our lives if we miss out I know you have danced you have jumped around but right now I want you to just reflect in one minute on the faithfulness the goodness the kindness It's grace, your grace. Lord, I'm nothing without you. Grace, your grace shines on me. Your grace, your grace. I'm nothing without you. Grace, your grace shines on me. Sujana nena ke. Sujana, sujana. Godia nena ke. Godia, godia. Sujana nena ke. Godia nena ke Godia Godia Suchada nena ke Suchada Suchada Godia nena ke Godia Godia Suchada nena ke Suchada Suchada Godia nena ke Godia Godia Suchada nena ke Godia nena ke Godia Godia Na gode Na gode Na gode Na gode Na gode Na gode Ya Yesu na gode Na gode Na gode Na gode Na gode Na gode, 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 na na You reign, you reign, hello King, you reign, you reign, you reign, hello King, you reign, you reign, you reign. 
Majesty, Your 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 Majesty, and begin to count your blessings Lord I was in front of that car it would have killed me I know it was not my faith but your mercies I watch you raise school fees for me in a way and manner I saw that cross waved are you ready to worship him? Count your blessings, Koinonia, for the job you gave me. You changed my financial status this year. You opened my eyes and gave me understanding. I got born again this year. I got filled with the Holy Ghost this year. I understood the word of God this year. For multiplied grace. For uncommon influence. Pray. Tell him thank you. My father and my mother came back this year. They were at the verge of divorce, but by your grace you stepped in. Worship him. Jesus, I say thank you. I never had any plane crash. car accident you gave me a new house this year you gave me accurate knowledge oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. victory belongs to Jesus Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to Jesus over my life. I 
watch the power of witchcraft broken. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Jesus, sing it from the depth of your heart. Hey, oh, oh, oh. Hey, hey. For the next two minutes, we are going to thank God as a family. We have seen the hand of God in mysterious ways this year miracles upon miracles changed lives men and women here bodily entered into dimensions in the spirit lift your voice and thank god for koinonia for victory for victory for influence for grace ha. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 Hallelujah. You know, brothers and sisters, time will fail me to begin to tell you the things that God has done for us as a ministry. Influence, favor, access, multiplication of grace. When the media department was submitting a progress report preparing for the dinner, one of the most touching testimonies is that as far as the moment any teaching is uploaded online an average of 1 million downloads within the first 24 hours no publicity no sir if I by the finger of God brothers and sisters we have seen answered prayers it was here you dropped the request yet the answer was waiting for you at home and you saw miracles people transformed by the hand of god i don't know about you but brothers and sisters help me thank this god in one minute and say lord thank you epochal teachings that have come the mysteries of the kingdom building men and women some of you have seen your lives change you've seen the anointing at work in your life mighty dimensions of grace thank you jesus hallelujah one last prayer point I want you to thank God for your family. I know some of them are not here on their behalf. If you ever lie to me and say you did not see his hand this year, you will not be fair. You know what January was. You know what December is right now. Lift your voice and say, Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, mighty God, mighty God, thank you for our families, many God born again this year, many God filled with the Holy Spirit, many found direction for their lives. The words you turns things around help me Wow. 
your power. Oh, Nisha, oh, you have shown me so much mercy. Hallelujah. I'd like you in advance to thank him for the balance of the year into 2017 because you must get here. Don't ask. Don't ask. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I thank you. Your promises are yea and amen. And I say thank you. No devil will stop my eyes from seeing it. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. In advance. That sickness will not go with me to 2017. I give you praise. Are you giving him praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have given God praise. I want to release something upon your life that you will take back home. For when you give him praise, you provoke a dimension of his glory. You provoke a dimension of his grace. I want to pray for you from the depth of my heart. You have given thanks. It's time for you to carry the anointing and the grace that will help you finish. So that you don't go home crying again. You go as an ambassador. Listen. Listen. On Tuesday I had a great time in the prayer department. Inside, outside, any of the overflows. I want you to be very sensitive now. I want to pray for you. The prayer department i had a great time with them and one of the things i shared with them listen is that the level of grace and unction you carry defines your possibilities in this kingdom not just the name of jesus listen please our possibilities are defined by the level and the kind of unction that is at work in our lives are we together now mm. Hundred dollars and hundred naira are all the same denominations but not the same value. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Every challenge you face that is lower than the level of the grace and unction you carry will be solved. But every challenge you face that is higher than the level of grace and unction you carry will not be solved. Scripturally you will see that it should be solved. But the dynamics of bringing the result to your life is that you must upgrade through understanding and impartation to a level that will afford God to release the possibilities at the level that you desire. Are we together now? Our lives are limited by the level of grace and unction that we carry. From January to December, God has been faithful over our lives. Some of you now are going home. There are all kinds of yokes of darkness waiting to mock God like they did last year. But you are going back with an unction. So that what could not happen last year. I want you to believe what I'm telling you. Our possibilities. There are some of you, if you do not introduce the anointing you are about to receive in your family, they will not celebrate Christmas well because there are orchestrations of hell but for your presence and so you appear there and introduce a mystery that disarms principalities and powers your understanding and the anointing are the keys you need to command victory your understanding and the anointing not just the anointing not just your understanding they work together like your left and right hand 
So an anointed life with a wrong paradigm will limit its operation. A healthy paradigm with no anointing will stimulate the, the expectation of possibilities that may never happen. You need both. A renewed mind which you have received all through this year. Please, I'd like you to pray one minute with your heart open and say, Lord, I desire this grace. Let, let it come upon my life and make the difference. The difference. I have given you praise. Please pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will speak over everyone, but let me just pray for the heads of department, just the heads of departments and the, maybe the ministers. Please, quickly, quickly. Just in one minute. I feel like doing that for them and then I'll just pray for everybody. Add grace. There is an unction from the Holy One. They have walked in measures of grace. Join them, Pastor Alpha. Femi, join them. Promise, join them. Father, you have honored this house. You have brought grace upon us. Lord, I pray that the leaders will carry strange levels of grace. Please believe what is coming on you. Don't trivialize it. I will pray for you. Strange grace. Grace. Strange grace. Strange grace. Strange grace. Strange grace. Strange grace. 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 In the name of Jesus. next level from your spirit man in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ strange grace strange grace by the power of the Holy Ghost fire strange grace 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 for the next level in the name of Jesus Christ fresh grace fresh grace fresh grace Fresh grace for the next level. Lift your hands, please, everyone. Lift your hands. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing smoke and it's coming on people. The Lord is saying this is a prophetic grace. Lord, I release my hands right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Take it. I place it upon your spirit. Receive that grace, prophetic grace, privy to insights in the spirit, privy to insights in the spirit. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. I want to pray a prayer that everyone should release. There is a grace that releases the creative power of the word of God not the revelatory power revelation informs creation makes if I tell you God said this will happen listen I want you to believe me I'm about to release something on your life that when you speak there is a kind of unction that can leave your words and create realities not inform people it will happen I stand in the name of Jesus under this apostolic and prophetic anointing father inside and outside let men be baptized into this realm of reality receive that baptism right now creative dimensions creative dimensions inside outside receive it in the name of jesus 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 it 
is not just speaking there is a level of grace I want to pray for you God has shown me favor this year in my life in a way and a dimension that I can only give him glory father I pray that Esther anointing that causes men to arise mysteriously in the name of Jesus take that anointing to your homes take it in your life Papa, take it, take it. You can't stand it. It must come upon you. It will land upon your spirit, man. That Esther anointing. That Esther anointing. Help them, please. Please help that lady someone. In the name of Jesus. Aaron, that anointing is coming on your wife. An angel of the Lord is pouring that oil upon your wife. It's a new season of favor. A strange season of favor. A strange season of favor. A strange season of favor. I hear my spirit restoration. 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 The mantle is falling. Restoration. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Restoration inside and outside. I don't care what has left you. Help that mother please. Restoration of gifts. Restoration of dimensions. Restoration of levels in the spirit you once carried that have left you. I release that grace on you right now. Strange restoration. A level of wisdom that you have never seen in your life illumination by the spirit to know what to do per time wisdom manifesting as divine direction ah, yeah, 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 yeah. divine strategies receive it right now in the name of Jesus know what to do I command your spirit to know what to do by the illumination of the word of God I put the word of God upon your spirit and I command access to light, access to illumination. Every prophetic word that came upon your life in January and is yet to find expression in the name of the Lord God of heavens, between now and 31st December, let there be a performance, a strange performance. A strange performance. A strange performance. I pray for you. The mystery of exemption. That when men say there is a casting down, there is an anointing that can exempt men. I decree and declare that as that unction comes upon you, you are strangely and evidently exempted. Strangely and evidently exempted. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying anyone here being eyed by the spirit of death the spirit that snatches the lives of men 28th, 29th, 30th where men die some even December 31st by 6 o'clock I command in the name of Jesus I forbid the earth from taking the body of anyone anyone marked for death here I extend your life by the word of the Lord I extend your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you. Listen. Some of us are going to the village. Now listen. We are not in darkness as to the wickedness that is in villages. The Spirit of God is doing something in this lady. There is restoration that God is bringing. There are people who are going to villages and there are wicked spirits enforced by the presence of men. Don't say it does not exist. 
that snatches the way people go peacefully and return back divorced. I pray for you. Whoever plays with your life, I stand upon this altar. I command the earth to open up and swallow them. I say it again. Any man that makes any enchantment, any invocation over you or your loved ones, the earth will open and swallow them. I was talking with a lady today, we are rounding up, who shared something very touching with me. Where she comes from, there are certain rules and regulations. There are some trees you don't touch. You touch those trees by mistake. You pay for it with barrenness or something mysterious. So if you mistakenly just see orange or guava and you decide to pluck it and eat it, that will be the end of it. She said the ground, the soil, where their compound is, their house, that you can stand there if anybody stands on it or something and makes invocation except somebody anointed intervenes it must happen and then some i think a relative to them now went and stood there and made a pronouncement over the family whether there was something about building house and he said whoever builds that house that as is reaching zinc level let the person die i said they should go to the village and tell that man that they met someone called Joshua Selman searched through witchcraft they call your name they die like chickens I tell you they call your name they die like chickens listen don't let men threaten you with nonsense value what you have a man born of a woman it exists and it will work until your light bails you out but let me tell you something i say it again i don't know who has said what job said he will deliver you from the scorching tongues of men i decree and declare and i reverse any pronouncement made over any family in the name of jesus christ hallelujah Jimmy, a lady told me something the other day that there is I think a clan or a family where some people come from whether they are cursed or something they, they cannot marry they can't do I, I think she was telling me something like that for doing nothing once you are born into that family they say a curse is on you and truthfully speaking if someone marries you or whatever it is that's the end of it now what did you do wrong did you decide your bet somebody did something somewhere and now you are a victim of a stupid statement everybody shout no way shout it no way listen some of you have allowed that lie that's why you don't prosper hold on please let me just talk for one minute this thing is boiling my spirit there are people who will not break certain barriers because someone has indoctrinated you into believing that there is a covenant of poverty and truthfully the devil has leverage on your thinking and you are seeing it happen and it's true there are families like that you do everything it will not work but in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I prophesy over your life I don't care how long it has been break that barrier in the name of Jesus break that barrier in the name of Jesus Listen, don't think I'm just talking. I understand witchcraft. I've told you, my grandmother was an idol worshiper. She used to brew beer for masquerades. So don't think that they gave her to me inside plane. I was just flying and enjoying myself. I've told you how demons, witches and wizards used to oppress me. As a man of God, preaching with anointing. Come on now. whatever the devil has taken from you i don't care when in the name of jesus the bible says if you catch a thief he must return tenfold i command supernatural restoration now 
this year will not end till you are restored fully restored Finally, I pray for you. The grace that distinguishes men is called the oil of gladness. Therefore, God, even thy God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Not for the purpose of competition, but to set a standard that is established in righteousness. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, the grace that has distinguished this ministry May that grace start walking and speaking in your life from today. You will travel and not even a nail, the, the, your, your tire, not even a nail, the tire will not match even a nail in the name of Jesus Christ. For those of you who are afraid, the spirit of fear, the Bible says, and to deliver them who through fear have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. Fear is a dangerous spirit. If there is any voice speaking to anyone here, you will not make it next year. I reply that voice as representing the voice of Jesus. I command that devil to be out of your life forever. <laughs> Lift your hands and give him praise. hallelujah please let's keep standing everyone overflow all the overflows let's keep standing let's keep standing everybody this is the last service there are people here right now who have never please listen this is our last service this year and I know there are people first overflow second overflow outside who are saying man of God if you would give me the opportunity I really want to make it right with Jesus I love him but for some reason I've derailed from the ways of God and others are saying I've never really made that genuine decision I know there are many of you outside while you heard me speak the Holy Spirit was ministering to you that is calling you into a deeper level two groups of people those who have never made a genuine decision for Jesus and those who are saying I don't want to end this year like this I have seen the messes of God but I do not want to take his mercy for granted wherever you are I'll count one to five very quickly. Please don't be ashamed. Don't wait for anyone to come. You are the first. Leave your seat right now. And God bless you as you make your way to the front. Quickly. One. God bless you. God bless you. Clear the way for those outside. I know there are people coming. God bless you. The Holy Spirit is speaking to people. God bless you. Koinonia, you are appreciating them. Two. God bless you. Keep coming. Clear the way for those outside. Those coming outside, please double up. You can follow both of the doors. In this overflow, follow the main door. And then the other overflow, follow the side quickly. Three. The Bible says, For God so loved the world, for God so loved you, that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Four. One more count and we're done. Please double up. Please double up. God bless you. You are still seated. The Holy Spirit is saying you should come out. Win that war tonight. Don't fight him. Make your way to the front. Make your way to the front. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. This is the greatest decision literally. You've heard men of God say it. And it's not just some emotional thing because we inherited it. It truly is the greatest decision. To not only make Jesus Lord of your life, but to surrender everything to him. Lift your right hand with me, and I want you to say this truthfully. You are not reciting a poem. There is a miracle happening right now. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. And I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you were raised from the dead for my justification. Tonight, I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I'm a child of God. The spirit of God lives in me. From today, the grace to live the victorious Christian life is released upon me. 
in Jesus name let me pray for you father I present these ones to you they have made genuine decisions for your glory let today be the beginning of the greatest days of their lives in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that your sins are forgiven the power of sin is broken over your life the flesh has no place in your life again in the name of Jesus you're under the full influence of the Spirit of God from now in the name of Jesus Christ I pray amen and amen God bless you thank you for this great decision I like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands they will just communicate a few details to you and you'll be back to your seat God bless you please sit down for just a minute thank you Jesus hallelujah before I make welcome all those who are worshiping with us for the first time I usually would do this before the announcements but I just want to welcome them specially praise the Lord today marks the last koinonia service for 2016 are we grateful dearly beloved